Welcome to AQD on the Air. I'm your host, Philip Crabb. Our guest today serves as the pastor for Resurrection Church in the Boyle Heights area of East Los Angeles. He has been serving Boyle Heights and surrounding communities for over 25 years by providing leadership and working with local environmental justice groups. His work with the community has included raising awareness about environmental justice issues and spearheading grassroots efforts in opposing projects which may have had adverse impacts on the community. Monsignor Moretta, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Can you please give our viewers a brief history of the work you've been involved in and talk to us about the principles that guide your work? I first began in, to be involved in the issue of the environment uh, back in probably about 1990 and late 80s. And it was uh, because the city of Vernon, I think your viewers may have heard of the city of Vernon, the city of Vernon was trying to uh, put together a proposal to put a toxic waste incinerator. It wasn't just a, a waste incinerator, it was going to burn toxic waste. And this was going to be something really, uh, they promised this would be uh, a cutting edge, this is going to be a fantastic thing. Well, they didn't talk about all the contamination that was going to be emitted from the the stacks and from the burning of these uh, toxic waste things. So we were very concerned about that. We felt that we weren't getting all the information. We tried at that time and visited every resident of the city of Vernon, everyone that, that, that lives there. Not one of them would sign a petition against this proposed hazardous waste uh, incinerator. Not one person would sign it. And they said to us, and many of these people I knew, not many, but a good, a good percentage of them I really knew, some of them coming to my church, and they said, Father, as soon as we sign that document, it means that we will lose our job and we will lose our housing. And these were people that were living literally within the shadow of that, of that uh, proposed um, incinerator. Eventually, we won, it went out to uh, uh, Arizona, I believe was his final destiny, where it should have been, someplace out there. But we were concerned not just with the, the fumes, we also raised the issue of all the trucks that were going to go through our community. They would go up and down the Soto Corridor, the Washington Corridor. Certainly on Soto Street, they would have been, um, if, they had fought, if they had been an accident, if there had been an explosion, uh, it would have been really a, a, a catastrophe here. So that was one of the first things to, to, to get myself uh, initiated into the environmental justice issue. What are some of the more recent projects you've been involved in? Well, there's two outstanding ones right now that I believe are very controversial. One of them is the Exide Battery Company, west of the Mississippi. Now, that's a long, a lot of space. West of the Mississippi, uh, the biggest plant that recycles lead batteries is the Exide, and Exide has been cited many times by the AQMD and other agencies uh, on the amount of pollution that they are putting in the air. Now, it isn't just dirty air, we're talking about lead, which is just detrimental to children. Do you know that in the city of Maywood, the children, when they come into school, when they start school, their blood is tested for lead, how much percentage they have of lead in their, in their blood. That is one of the areas that borders the Exide technologies. My parish is on the, uh, on the southern border, or the northern border rather, of Exide Technologies. And they have not been a good neighbor. They have not been a good neighbor. So we have taken them to court. We have taken the, the AQMD right now has some um, uh, decisions that they are asking them to make changes, to encapsulate uh, the things that burn off this lead, the separation of this, uh, these chemicals. And um, it's going to cost them a lot of money, so they have to decide, are they going to stay there or are they going to go to another community? And uh, we're still waiting for that decision right now. But that's a very long battle and a very, very serious thing. It's not so glamorous. You don't read about it in the newspaper so much, but it is a very, very important. And I'm happy with uh, AQMD especially, who has uh, risen to the challenge and has given them um, a, a very direct order, a very direct thing, either or, either move or uh, do this uh, plan that they have in place. The other thing that we've been very involved in certainly is the Vernon power plant. Uh, the city of Vernon already has a power plant. It produces approximately 175 megawatts. They estimate 
they need perhaps 25 more megawatts. We'll give them 25 megawatts. Now, uh, that, that's not that many, but they proposed, uh, they asked uh, the uh, agencies in California, the AQMD was the first agency they had to go to, uh, they wanted to build a new plant, but this one was going to be 943 megawatts. This would be the granddaddy of all the power plants. And they thought that they could get away with this because of the history of the neighboring cities. Uh, the, the, they have been divided upon some of these issues or they have not been really organized. And they thought they could, uh, as a separate incorporated city, which we all heard about, they could therefore run with, one, run with this and not be challenged because they had this, uh, this, uh, this power of themselves. It was a terrible, terrible project. It would have been something that would have affected the lives of many people. Um, people say, well, you know, really, the trucks are really more dangerous, or uh, uh, the freeways are more dangerous, the cars, the locomotives. But this was a project that didn't have to be built, but they wanted to build it for pure greed. And we know that from the American Cancer Society, because the amount of small particulate matter that would be discharged from this particular uh, uh, power plant, it would be up to 33 deaths per year. Now that doesn't include all the stillbirths, it doesn't include all the um, uh, miscarriages and all the other things, uh, the uh, up uptick of um, asthma and all these other things that, that are so, so uh, uh, prevalent in our community. It doesn't count those things. So yeah, we took it on and uh, I'm very proud of the fact that we were able to stop it. And uh, subsequently you can see that Vernon has issued, uh, run into a lot of other issues. Rail yards and locomotive operations are a big problem in Southern California and an issue AQMD has been working on for many years with community groups to reduce or eliminate adverse impacts. Can you talk a little about your efforts on this issue and what can be done in the future? The railroad yards exist in the city of Commerce and that is directly to the south of Boyle Heights area, the greater Los Angeles area, East LA area, and right next to the city of Vernon. And geographically, it is an area that is also bounded by the Long Beach Freeway, which has some 47,000 trucks that continue to pollute the air on, on just on that freeway. But when you put together the Long Beach Freeway contamination, which is 24-7, and the railroads down below, which are a mega railroad, it's not just a, one little choo-choo train. We're talking about a major uh, conglomeration of these uh, ra railroad uh, uh, trains and diesel and other things that they burn. Uh, certainly a solution to that has got to be the cooperation of our community with the AQMD, uh, with the AQMD's help to enforce these rules. Uh, I, I know that the, one of the last times I was at a, a meeting of the Board of Directors of the AQMD, very prominent was uh, the lobbyists for the railroads with their portfolios and with their connections and all of the above. Uh, what the community needs is the AQMD to stand with us and to really give direction and uh, a defense uh, to the communities because without that uh, we would really be sunk and I think it's very, very important. Together with the AQMD, certainly I think one of my great heroes is Angelo Logan. Angelo is uh, the primo guy. He is the go-to man for the last 11 years, the East Yards community. Um, uh, have put together a fantastic coalition, not just the city of, of, of Commerce, uh, but all the neighboring cities and the different politicians. They all look upon uh, that group, Angelo's group, as really a very positive thing. And they're, they're, not, um, uh, they're not a group that takes no prisoners. These are, these are a group that really sees, a, a, wants to work with the different agencies, wants to keep the air clean, and understands that it's, it's a, a situation uh, that is not tolerable, but it is a situation that they can cure. And hopefully with people like Angelo and the, um, the East Yards people, we'll be able to clean it up better. AQMD has recently launched a new program called the Clean Communities Plan. They have selected Boyle Heights as one of two communities in the four county area for a pilot program for further environmental improvements. Can you talk a little bit about your participation with this? It's true that our community is really um, encircled by the freeways. If it's, uh, you name a freeway, 
uh, it's around here. We've got the, the 10, the 5, the 710. Uh, we've got the 105 further south. Uh, but all those are encircle us. And inside that circle of freeways, uh, you have a lot of industrial sectors. You have the, the railroad contamination. You have the, uh, the city of Vernon with its, uh, with its factory, with its industrial complexes there. But uh, in the, within that particular area, uh, there lives, uh, uh, as I say, 1.2 million people. So with all that contamination, with all the trucks, with all the cars, all the railroad uh, things that come by here, uh, it, it mounts to a, a real center, a real hot spot. So it's designated by the AQMD as a real place that needs attention together with the city of San Bernardino. Our area of Boyle Heights is in the, in the edge. We're in the very, very edge of the city of Los Angeles. And then you go further uh, east and you have East Los Angeles. Uh, again, uh, uh, all area that is low income, predominantly Hispanic, and people that are really very much in need and, and should have be given the chance to have clean air. Monsignor Moretta, from your experience, what organizing tools would you share with other communities facing similar issues as yours? And what should they take into consideration when working with different stakeholders to affect change? Well, air quality issues are very, very important. Obviously, that's why we're here today and why I spend much of my time. Uh, I will always try to defend uh, the, the, the air quality of our people. I believe very much that uh, we have an obligation to do that. And I think some of the ways we can do that are is to animate the people, to educate the people. I think we have to uh, use the uh, schools. You'll notice that in many of the areas that are impacted by contamination, those areas are very often in low-income minority communities. And in those communities, uh, especially in the Latino community, the church is going to be very active. And I think the, the, the AQMD working with churches, educating them how to, to do forums, how to impress upon people uh, how, uh, what is happening in, in, in their community as far as contamination goes. Uh, it isn't just enough to put in the in LA Times by law, they have to put down in the LA Times you know, an announcement that says uh, cancer is uh, caused by these agents and uh, they'll show you the plume of the, of the particular industry that is contaminating the area. Well, there isn't enough just to put that. That's nice. It, it, it gives a heads up to a lot of people if you can ever find it in the newspaper to begin with. That's another issue, but the point is that uh, the, the, um, those things are part of the education of the people. But I think that uh, using the local clergy, using the local churches, I think is just paramount. I think there's a resource there that is not being utilized nearly enough in the uh, in South Central, in the areas that are also suffering from a lot of uh, problems. Uh, the, the churches are very, very active. And I think that, that that's like a, a gold mine that the, uh, that the um, I think it could be done, uh, uh, could be utilized in a more effective way. I think your school boards, I think the, the school boards have to take an initiative in this. The schools maintain our children for six hours a day. That's almost as much as time as kids when if they go to the park if they go out you know they may sleep eight hours if they're lucky they're spending just about as much time at the school as they are at home and to overlook that or the for the school boards to be neutral about that i think is very very grossly uh, wrong i think the uh, the local stakeholders like that the, the the chambers of commerce a lot of small communities especially do have chambers of commerce they almost are every place fraternal groups all these people, if they were given the right uh, incentive or the right information, I think they would, they would participate. They would go to meetings. They would make their voice be heard. Um, we heard just like now, in, 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 um, and so often when people see abuses happening, then they, they, they rise to the occasion. And I think there is a great need for people to become educated and to encourage uh, other people to become involved. So I would think those are some of the things the schools, the churches, the local politicians, the chambers of commerce, um, just to put their feet to the fire. Monsignor Moretta, I want to thank you for joining us and commend your vision and leadership in assisting the Boyle Heights community in dealing with air quality issues. Thank you very much, thank you. Well, that's our show. Thank you for watching AQMD on the Air. 
Visit us at cleanairconnections.org to learn how you can help us clean the air that we breathe.